Hey guys, Whitney from the Holiday Homestead here, um, and with Porter. Sorry, Porter. <laughs> um, so today we are harvesting our amaranth. Um, I have other videos about growing amaranth for uh, grain and for supplementing for your animals, um, and especially chickens. And today we're actually harvesting it. So I figured I'd show you guys how to do that. Um, so this is our amaranth row. This is the big uh, golden amaranth that the we grew. Forest. Yes, it is a forest. Um, that we grew from uh, Baker Creek Heirloom uh, Seed Company seeds. Um, it's about 40, 45 feet long, um, and as you can see, it got pretty big. Um, we also have another row directly behind us, and this is a different kind of amaranth. Um, I'm not sure if it's ready yet. There's uh, orange amaranth and then green amaranth down there. Um, I'm not sure if it's ready yet, but we'll have a look, but I know for sure this golden amaranth is ready. And the way that you can tell that it's ready is when you uh, have it in your hand and you just give it a little little shake and seeds come off. Not just pollen, not just uh, flower petals, but actual seeds. Porter, don't do that, honey. You're wasting. Um, so this, like right there, that's the seed. And if it comes off that easily in your hand, then it's definitely ready to be harvested because um, <laughs> what's happening is every time a, a bird comes by or something, uh, you're losing seed, which is not fun because it's just shaking right out. So you want to go ahead and um, harvest. And so the way that we harvest, and we'll just show you. So, right here, so y'all can see it better. Okie doke. So, so, um, what you'll need is a knife and just a regular, any kind of knife. And you take the head and you want to cut right at the base of the head. You try to get all these little, um, these little small sections as well. Go ahead and get all those. And you just cut it off. Then, um, I put it in, okay, hold that please, so we have a kiddie pool here, and I just throw it in there. It's nice to use a kiddie pool or something like a large bin, so that as you're dropping the grain, as you're um, putting it down and handling it, you're not losing so much of the grain. Um, you can still collect it and put it in your um, bag. So after it goes here, then it goes over to here. Where Porter, show me what you do, honey. So the best part is to get most of it. You just kind of like just take off all these leaves, make sure it's not dangling down so you don't lose too much grain. And you kind of like pull it down or something, anything you want to take off all the leaves because they hold a lot of like wetness inside them. And you need, you need it to dry so you can actually use it like, like some of wheat or something. Exactly. So you take off all the leaves so that um, you can dry it better. And then, we'll put the finished head in a bag. Um, these are old seed bags that we use. These are like, um, it's like a kind of plastic burlap, kind of. Um, and the best part about these is that they allow air to breathe through them. You don't want to use like um, a really nice, like um, the bags that like Neutrina has because they have a plastic coating on the inside which keeps out moisture and that's great for the grain when you're um, storing it but when you need it to dry you need a little bit of air flow through there so you want the bags that are a bit kind of cheaper and, and more yeah, and, and more like, breathable yeah, they're more like fabric so um so yeah so that's that and then the the greens and the stalks all of this goes over here and we put it onto um, a big tarp and that's the stalk and all the leaves these all go to the pigs and to the goats and the sheep and they all absolutely love it so it is a huge uh, resource to have amaranth on the farm because every part of it basically is edible um, and it's really wonderful so uh, here we go let's do some harvesting
No, I'm just showing you how to get one. So go ahead and get your refill. So this is the salt left over, and that just goes, and that just goes on the tarp. Yeah, so, but the really weird thing about, about amaranth is because it's hard as rock. And we can probably, like, use it for, like, you know, building a house or something. <laughs> like it's wood. Good. It's like wood. Alright. If you like bangers. So, there's the salt. And also, you can boil this down. Um, some people do eat the leaves. Um, they are edible, kind of like, um, like a spinach. Um, I've tried them before, but I did, oh uh, gosh, like the really, the really small leaves. And they were actually were pretty tasty. Um, they tasted almost kind of bland. There really wasn't a lot of flavor, um, to them, except what we added to it. So it actually was really nice, um, as just kind of a, an extra green on the table. Um, but the animals certainly love all of it, including the stalks and stems and everything. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's really handy, and that's why we grow it out here. Um, we use it, like my son said, we use it for, like, a cream of wheat, we use it kind of like as a side dish. Also, amaranth does have enough, um, uh, gluten in it to, uh, bind, kind of like flour, like a, like a wheat flour. Um, so you can make, like, pitas out of it. It doesn't hold together super well, but it is possible to make, like, a, a pita or, like, a pancake kind of um, food out of it. Um, so anyway, so it's pretty versatile. That's how we grow it. And um, I have to look at my chart, but I think we planted this back in May, I want to say, and this is now uh, August 12th. So um, so it took a, you know, a few months, but honestly pretty fast growing for a good grain and green source. Um, anyway, so that's basically it, guys. We're just going to keep harvesting here and, uh, and get some, get all this done before the sun gets too hot. Anyway, so I hope that helps you guys and, uh, definitely grow some amaranth. Bye. Bye. <laughs>